Now let's get into a little Q&A, which is my favorite part of the show. And here we go. John Cutter had a good point. Every day is something new. It's something new. And I think that's a negative one. But expect this to keep happening. Expect this contagion to happen. So in all honesty, don't be surprised when it does. Focus on the things you can change, not the things you can't change. You can't change these companies collapsing. You can't change the markets imploding. But what you can do is choose to invest into something, stay on the sidelines, take profits if there's any profits, or just get out and just wait for something else. It's up to you. There's a lot of options for you, but you can't change everything. What the heck? Who's this guy? Speaking of things you can't change, there's one mullet. Old Bear Ben is a new marketplace as an open mind. Ben is in a new marketplace. Mullet is now in the beautiful state of Florida, golfing. Got out of that uh, that uh, frozen tundra, aka Chicago. I don't know why he was ever living there. Eric's got a good point. Crypto ain't dead. It just isn't pretty. It's very true. Ah, thank you. Levity, not brevity. I misspoke. Bitcoin forever. Old Bear says, crypto is just kicking off. Tokenization is going anywhere. Yeah, perhaps so. Vicky? <laughs> Philip says, I think that's not over Starlink. Starlink, you know how much that, that costs? No way. It's like, I want to say it's between $100 and $200. Correct me where I'm wrong here. And then the setup cost is even more higher than that. And I'm not doing that just so I can have perfect internet all the time. No, th thank you. Which is another question that I, I get a lot about with World Mobile Token versus Starlink. Like, well, Rob, wouldn't Starlink take over for World Mobile token and they're connecting the unconnected? Yeah, if they want to drop the price 90% or so, I, I suppose so. But uh, there's not a lot of, um, and of course, you have to have, I mean, just the materials to, to do it. I don't think it's going to happen. It's not expensive, especially in parts of, you know, parts of Africa that are um, downtrodden and have e uh, economic repression. You're not going to be able to afford that. And that's where the world mobile talk comes in and Cardano. I love them. The clown is killing me. I'm scared. If you see, everybody knows that was a filter. <laughs> when there, I mean, says, when there's blood in the streets, what should we do? Wait for more blood. That could be it. I didn't see the clown yet. Hello, mods. Everybody, Vicky, thank you so much. Uh, Sweatcoin Deep Dive, why I believe into it. Believe in it. There's a link in the description. <laughs> Stay inside. Ah, it's good to have mullet back in the dry, the dryness. When's everybody coming to Puerto Rico? It's a beautiful time here. You see this? I don't know where you're at, but it's like this constantly. It's like between 74 and 86 all the time. Hey, Shannon. When Mullet told me two good things. This is one of them. Every winning, streak, every winning streak starts with loss. And the other thing he said, he goes, it's amazing to me how a, uh, a short-term trade turns into a long-term hold. I'll never forget that. It's a great statement. I don't know if that's true. They didn't use nukes in W2. They used a nuke, I would say. Hmm. Well, you have to understand, though, if, if Russia is going to use a nuke, and we're going to use a nuke, and parts of Europe are going to use nukes, I mean, you have to understand there's this thing called MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction. So if you can get that, that nuclear missile off and not have any repercussions, then you'll win. Of course, I think it would be pretty awful for the rest of the planet, but I'm just saying. And uh, everybody will respond, so I don't understand the point. Hey, Matisse, just rolled up. Oh, you missed a good one. Cobra Kai. H-Bar? Uh, Never got into H-Bar. What makes it so awesome? People say it's great. Happy Sunday. Ah, uh, sun starts to... Yeah, I'd rather watch that than me, for sure. <laughs> World moment looking good. 
This is a great question. If you sell your property in Puerto Rico, will you buy crypto with a small percent of the money? Not right now. Um, I try to separate these different endeavors. So real estate has its own real estate fund and we keep those separate in different bank accounts. Uh, the crypto funds are in a separate bank account. Uh, Amazon business, the sports facility business, those are all in different funds. And it's not like I'm some huge baller. I just, I just have enough to keep my sanity and that's about it. Mm, future millionaire, great question. Hey Rob, do you foresee another leg down? Yes. And why no DCA this week? Oh, the show. So we're gonna, I'm gonna step down. I got a lot of things going on and uh, James is gonna pick it up and do some things with it, which is great. Uh, he does a good show. He's got a lot of, I mean, there's probably some better guests than me. That's for sure. Uh, hey, Rob, thanks for the time and busy schedule. Yeah, so everybody, if you'd like to uh, look, it is a bear market. It sucks. But if you want to help people out who probably have a lot less than you, there's this great organization called Protechos. I went there. That was one of the reasons I couldn't do a video on Friday. I spent a good chunk of time with uh, uh, a guide who showed me in the favelas here in Puerto Rico and all the different destruction. And what they do is they build roofs for people who don't have roofs here. And they do it for free because it's a nonprofit organization. Because, I mean, it sucks to not have electricity or water, but imagine that when you have a roof over your head, literally. It's, you can't live like that. So that's what they do. And uh, we took a look at that, went to a, uh, a fundraiser Friday night, had a little too much to drink, and here we are doing this thing. Then Saturday, Saturday I just couldn't get things done. We're getting things ready to potentially sell one of our condos. And uh, then I went, then I went off and said, I got to do something for me. And I went and played volleyball on the beach over at East Liver. They ironworks says anything under 20 K is a steal. Helium moved to five G. Huh. Yeah. Look at that. Thoughts on altcoin regulation. It's going to come fast and furious and uh, maybe they get it right. I don't think so. Probably heavy handed. And that's it. Which is why I'm glad that we are in that space and talking to the people. Because imagine if we didn't put any of our foot, our feet forward and, and uh, start a dialogue with the senators and, and uh, House of Representative members. I mean, the one that did the most was probably Sam Bankman Freed because he was donating over a billion dollars to their campaigns. Allegedly, that's what Elon Musk put out. Who knows? And, uh, but it's still, we, we still have to have a conversation going on or else they'll regulate it for us. And we do not want that. Yeah, Dan says, weather is nice till the storms come. Yeah, this is true. Hurricanes right around the, for, right around the corner every time. Robert says, Grayscale Trust will declare bankruptcy. I don't know if that's true. I mean, look, I've been talking about Tether forever, how I don't trust it. Yet that still keeps chugging along, even after all these things go down. I think if... If you're a centralized exchange or a crypto project, you make it through this, this winter, it's going to be, you are setting yourself for massive gains. Massive. I mean, big, huge, huge, enormous. I'll tell you a story. We had a friend, uh, uh, David B. in uh, El Paso. And all he did was he saw a, a collapse coming in the housing market. That's all he did was real estate. And he sold most of his real estate in 2005 or six and just sat on cash for like years. And we're like, David, do you really think it's going to happen? He's like, oh, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. And he waited until deep into 2008. Then he bought a just everything, <laughs> commercial, residential, duplexes, apartment complexes. I mean, everything for pennies on the dollar. And now that guy and his kids and his kids' kids, they'll never have to work. That guy owns so much property now. I mean, and all he had to do was just wait, just be patient. And that's the power of recessions, big recessions, bear markets. That's the power. You just have to go through them. And people say they suck. I don't think they suck. I think they're fun. I mean, if you, if you just sit in the sidelines, and even if you don't have that much, you're just like, well, I know I want to make more money here than I'm going to make in, you know, buying, you know, I don't know, Cardano at 250 so just saying. Hey. Okay. 
Ah, it's goofy. Ready for my portfolio new? Yeah, this is true. Andrew's got a good, this is, it might be true. 3 p.m. pullback before a biweekly run. We'll see. I'm just waiting for tomorrow or this week for all the different, uh, the negative news about what's going to drop now. But again, you know, for everything that's dropped and all the things that have happened, all the problems, I mean, does this not amaze you to, for holders that are in the money? Only there's more people out of money than in money as far as Bitcoin. And still 68% hold. I wonder what that, what, what those numbers would look like on like uh, Facebook stock. Just saying. Or Apple stock. Do you think 68% of Facebook holders are still holding their stocks? I'm just guessing. I don't know. All right. Yeah, James' YouTube link is right there. Best answers. What's your thoughts on Insane Clown Posse? Well, I mean, it's a pretty good band. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, internet, what, uh, internet protocol. Uh, I think it was supposed to do well, and then SBF kind of screwed it over. Or maybe it was, yeah. I don't know. I thought it was an interesting idea. I thought it was ahead of his time. But uh, we'll see. Protecho's link, thank you. Also, all these links that uh, Bicky's throwing out there is also in the uh, description. <laughs> this is a good history lesson. Upper class people used to have parties in the Vegas desert and watch the nuclear test explosion from a distance. Great idea. They didn't know. Who know? <laughs> Mullet says Dan got fired like George did for DCA. Eh? That's funny. Old Bear says, Rob, how many businesses do you have? <clears throat> Are the Randall's and Amazon sales two different entities? Yes. As investing separate too. Uh, the investing for crypto is just in my own personal account. There's nothing, it's not in a, an entity. But as far as uh, the real estate, you know, we have those in, in a truck. And we try to keep things just separate as much as possible because when you sort of intermingle things, which I got to tell you, I've, like I'm no genius and I'm very small business owner. And even I understand the process of not commingling funds. I don't see why all these agencies or all these centralized players did it probably because they're making a lot of money and they didn't really care. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Sam did one good thing. You mean veganism looked very bad. Although I got to tell you, I had a vegan sandwich at uh, San Juan Smokehouse. Delicious. Vegan. It was vegan brisket. It was great. The brisket was better, though. <laughs> it's always the better. Oh, D-Tran says, I took all my cash and crypto off Gemini a few weeks ago. with watching you. Great. I'm actually doing something good. Thanks. Don't leave things on exchanges, everybody. What? Rob, would you know that Harry Dent lives in Puerto Rico? Would you have him on a show? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> but Harry, Harry is like the perma bear, isn't he? The one that he's like, everything's going to go and it's going to crash and everything else. I mean, I'll have him on the show. I come over to the house and I've got two microphones set up here. I've done before. Who else lives in Puerto Rico that would be a good guest? Mountain Man says, amazed we held 15K. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so this 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 desk, they're like there's a, we have the microphone here, there's another microphone here. We put the desk down and we have a conversation. Um, and that was it. Had a couple of times, it was pretty fun. Ben says, top three coins for the next bull run, except Bitcoin and ETH. Uh, probably USDC, Tether. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if we just talk about things coming back to, our, to their all-time high, besides Luna, let's be honest, um, I could see all the layer ones. I can see all the layer one solutions doing quite well. I don't see a reason for them to to not go back up. So that would be the uh, that would be the Cardanos and the polka dots and and the avalanches. 
Solana, once people get over their hatred of Sam, probably, but who knows? Aptos, I don't understand that one. It's just another one, I think. Vicky says, can you do a video on your Amazon business? Shh, no. Vicky, it is the most boring business you can possibly do. All it is is you talk to the distributors and say, hey, what do you got? I'll send you a spreadsheet. You run it through a program. You see which one's profitable and go, give me a thousand of those. And then, of course, you, they don't send to you. They send to Amazon warehouses, depending on the location that you want to send it to based on their needs. And then you try to just cut, uh, cut a profit. That's it. It's super boring. If you want to learn about it, go learn the, from the person I learned from, which is Bo Crable, B-E-A-U Crable, C-R-A-B-I-L-L. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, Algorand's got a problem. Algorand has a problem with their token distribution, and that's a problem. And look, even, even the Mooch, Anthony Scaramucci, he's been on the show, real great guy, nice guy, love to have him back. Um, he, they invested a quarter of a billion dollars in Algorand after sitting down and doing their due diligence. However, a lot of people did their due diligence on FTX, and that worked out like a charm. So I'm not so sure. Algorand... I mean, it's led by some pretty great people. Let's just see if they can do it. To me, I don't know. I don't know. I'm optimistic. Who's this bum? Benjamin Cowan. I think SBF's defense is just... <laughs> this, is a, this is a phrase that Ben always talks about. If you don't watch Ben, I steal all of his information from his website and put it on here. It's great. Into the cryptoverse. Really good stuff. And also, I just got to get his uh, dubious... Dubious t-shirt, dubious speculation. I'll get one as soon as I can afford it. <laughs> ben is back in the digital asset verse. Dubious statement. Long Mountain, Bitcoin 6K in four months. It could. Why not? And so this is the question then. I mean, here's the thing. The question is, and it's a good question. Rob, why do you DCA now? If you think it's going to go lower, because I'm pretty sure it's going to go lower. I don't think we've hit our bottom yet. And everybody calls for the bottom in June and they were all wrong. Now everybody says this is the bottom and, and hopefully they're right. But why would I keep doing it? It's because I just don't know and I'm not smart enough to figure it out because I just think to myself, if I just stay in the game and I can lower my, my cost basis over time, like let's just say I DCA Bitcoin every day. Let's just say I buy 20 bucks a day, right? Because I'm micro DCAing. Well, over time, if I'm hitting at 16, whatever the price is, 16.7, and I just keep it there and then it goes up a little bit and I buy a little bit there and a little bit. When it goes back to its all time high, which I'm pretty sure it will, who knows? Uh, I think my cost basis should be pretty low. Now, as it keeps going down, there's a good term Ben talks about dynamic DCAing. So this is kind of like my basis around 16.7. I'm like, I don't know if it can go much lower than this. Could go a 13, could go a 12. But as it goes down, I might start to double and triple up. We'll see. We will see. <sighs> Sam lied about being a vegan. He's not a vegan. Jesus, how many Christmas. Is there anything we can, we can uh, depend on? There's a guy named Liver King, the Liver King, who's this huge buff dude. And he talked about how he was, it was weird. He was totally natural, the whole thing, natty, never took steroids in his life. First of all, he's like mid, mid to late 40s like me, and he's jacked out of his mind. And he's like, I never took steroids. It's all my supplement company, whatever it's called. I forgot what it was. And he lied for like a year. And then they, then they uncovered his emails, and he was a liar. And it was weird because it went through all the different things. Where It's amazing how people can just lie to your face and just say, no, no, I never did steroids. And he would say it like constantly. And of course... Emails came out and lab reports came out. He was like juiced out of his mind. So it's amazing to me how people can lie so, so easily. I think it just gets easy as you keep doing it. Ah, mullet says, which is why politicians will defend him, especially when it's other people's money. I got to tell you, I think it's quite odd, isn't it? That, uh, I mean, Bernie Madoff, from the time that they found out about what was happening, to the time that they arrested him was within 24 or 48 hours. And within six months of when they arrested him to the trial, he was in jail. So you take a look at that. How long has FTX imploded? Three weeks, 
four weeks roughly. And that guy's doing appearances. I don't know if they're live, but I know he's been on a bunch of Twitter spaces and he's all over the place. And he's like, oh, I didn't know. I don't know if that's a good defense, but you can tell he's been coached a little bit by his legal team. All right. Yes. Who would like to see Mike Maloney? And if you don't know Mike Maloney, he's, he's an OG of, of gold. Loves gold, kind of a gold bug, but also got into crypto, into Bitcoin more specifically. I'd love to have him on. Trickshot says, my wife is Brazilian, probably will move there when the kids are old enough. And I will tell you guys this is that it's a learning experience. And then depends on where you're at in life. Like um, Mark Moss moved here. And uh, if you don't know Mark Moss, got a great show. Just really delves into the macro side. Big Bitcoin maxi, which is fine. And uh, he moved here to Rincon, which is on, you know, more towards the, I believe it's the eastern side of the island where it's all just, I mean, it's like a surfer's paradise, right? But you're kind of away from things. The problem is that when you're away from things, you're not used to the same luxuries that you had in, say, the States. And you just didn't like it. Of course, you had kids. So if you're going to move here, I would say, you know, you can move here with the kids, but I don't think it's a fantastic idea. If you're, if the kids are there, they love the school, and I would not move to, to here. Our kids are gone, so it doesn't matter for us. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Oh, <laughs> see, Meme says, Harry Dent believes crypto will go to $3,200, which I'm guessing he says Bitcoin, and then to the moon. Everybody says that. Tomato coin, it is, uh, it's on the uh, proof of sauce network. And uh, it's being used by um, Olive Garden. So, yeah. ZK roll-ups will be a good turn. I can agree. Senegal for the win. Did they already play? Who's playing today? I don't even know. Today is uh, beach tennis day. I got to get out there. That's why my face is so red. Because I don't tan. I just get redder. Ben's YouTube link. There it is. Yeah. Corey says, uh, try to meet up with John from Mark Rebellion. Uh, I've met up with him a couple of times. John from Mark Rebellion. He's also on MSNBC a lot. Nice guy. Real tall. Ah, that's tall of me, I guess. He used to play for the Bears. The Bears. Oof. <laughs> Mullet says, the Mooch bought Algo around a dollar. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Like all the geniuses that are out there and Mooch knows a heck of a lot more than me on traditional finance and hedge fund. I mean, he's, you know, smart guy. But man, I got to tell you, those those valuations, it sucks when you buy it at that price, but it's all about your time horizon, right? So if, if, if the Mooch and Skybridge Capital, their time horizon was six months, probably tough, but I think they're in it for the long haul, just like us. Is that, is that a CIA listening device in Rob's pool? Yes. Well, this is all a green screen. So, but I have a very uh, technically advanced green screen. It makes the trees sway and the stuff in my pool move. I'm actually in my mom's basement. Ah, oh, interesting. Scare machine best in Vulcan Forge. It's the one that uh, I think Alex Becker's always talking about hmm i like your approach that is a similar job. i have to agree also look at the people who are behind it i mean uh one of the co-founders of uh, youtube is behind it and also google is one of their enterprise validators and they just launched their uh mainnet 4.0 launch so we'll see fake liver king exactly the mooch, the mooch equals kathy wood Joe Rogan called his bluff. That's true. Liver King. Yeah, that guy was jacked. He was juice out of his mind. Political donations do go far. And there's a reason why that guy's not in jail, I think. But maybe it's just, I don't know. There's a lot of theories and they're all crazy. So it's just theories. And again, this is why I don't, I don't like to cover the 
the FTX collapse and what's going on with uh, with SBF because what's the point? What can we change? We can't change anything. We've already learned our lessons, haven't we? So I'm just like, I'll let everybody else talk about the things that are going on with SBF and stuff. And I'll just try to bring things to people's attention that could actually, you know, use. But there's no shortage of news on SBF. I'm just tired of it. <laughs> Harry Dan calls for a global explosion every five minutes. This is true. Well, so does Peter Schiff. But, you know, one year he's going to get it right. He's like, see, I told you. I've been saying it for 10 years, but I told you this time. Uh, oh, yeah, Max Mayer also lives in Puerto Rico. I should uh, get a hold of him. Also, um, uh, Puerto Rico Wi-Fi, I got to love it. Sorry. Uh, what? Gemini froze my account, told me I had to redo Q KYC and send back statements. That's awful. Mao Carrera says, hey, Rob, do you think we'll get our coins out of BlockFi at some point? I think you got a better chance to get them out of BlockFi than any of the other ones right now. BlockFi, at least they put a reorganization plan 24 hours after they filed for Chapter 11. You know, Celsius fired for, filed for uh, Chapter 11 not too long ago, months and months ago, excuse me, and they still haven't got a plan out. Nothing. So, I mean, they may talk a good game, but nothing's on paper, so that's worthless. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Well, next will be the next collapse. I don't know. I don't know. But I can make it, I can make it super simple for everybody. And that is that if you think that any of the centralized players are going to be uh, that are going to collapse, or even if you don't, it doesn't really matter. Just take everything off. It doesn't it's not going to kill you to take everything off of crypto. And if you can't, someone had a good point to me. They go, Rob, you keep talking about your, you know, the ledger and get a ledger. But what if I, what if I don't have a ledger or I, I need to do it right now? You know, you can take things off on a hot wallet. You know, you can use MetaMask. I know people say, oh, MetaMask. Well, what's safer right now? What was safer, Voyager or MetaMask? What was safer, Celsius or MetaMask? What was safer, FTX or MetaMask? Or any, any other crypto project-specific wallet was safer than those three catastrophes? Just saying. Also, you can get these at Best Buy if you have a Best Buy where you live. Run down there and get it. And that's it. And then lastly... Did the Celsius guy go to jail? It's a great question. And the answer is no. He's on Twitter spaces and living a sweet life still with your money. Also, I believe he's getting paid with your money. Also, I believe all the lawyers and uh, a lot of the staff from Celsius are getting paid with the money that you put. Uh, we, excuse me, excuse me, we, we put in. They're all getting paid. Even though Kraken laid off 30% of, uh, of its staff just last week. Yep, Celsius is like, these people are important. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Dan, how did FTX file for Chapter 11 when they were in the Bahamas? It's the same thing with uh, Chapter 11 for Mount Gox. They were in, I think they were in Japan, Asian country. It's because if you file for Chapter 11, say in the Bahamas, they don't have the resources or the ability to really, to really accurately segment into the legal process of a chapter 11. That's why everybody does chapter 11s here in the United States, because guess what? We've had a ton of companies go through chapter 11. And that's why people do it. So you can do it any way you want to, anywhere you want to. And of course they have a subsidiary, of course, in the United States, so. And there was one more question. Now, I trust safe, should I take my money out? So look, here's the thing about iTrust. You don't own your keys. It is a centralized exchange. This is true. You can transfer it because it is a Roth IRA and you're free to do that. Just know that there are tax repercussions. If you don't feel like this is the, the choice for you, take it off. Take it off and put it someplace else. Me personally, there's a reason why I diversify. I got roughly 1% in, in iTrust. I can only put six or $7,000 per year, roughly, into a Roth IRA. 
If you want, if you don't trust it, then take it off. But I will tell you this. Um, so all your crypto is stored in Coinbase custody, which is a co in cold storage, essentially. You don't own the keys, that's true. But if Coinbase custody gets hacked or something, which, I mean, who knows? Maybe it could. Uh, if it gets hacked, then you know who else loses all their crypto? MicroStrategy, because that's who they use as well. Does that mean that it's uh, foolproof? Nope. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying for me, there's risks for everything. I'm going to keep that risk. And that's me, though. Ah, let's see. And there was one more. I just had it. People, yeah. People on Twitter are waiting for Binance to collapse just to buy the dip. I don't think that buy the dip would help if it goes down. I think if, uh, yeah, that would be the next, you'd probably see below 12K if Binance collapse. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, this is true. Yeah, Kraken had no exposure to that. This is true. One of the few. And that's why I love Kraken. I, I, I like, I wish their app was better, you know, but whatever. They have a problem with integration into bank accounts. Maybe just me. But uh, I like Jesse Powell. I like what he talked about. I like the, the platform. And even as good as they are and as clean as they are, they still had to lay off 30% of their staff because it's, it's tough out there. So when I see these other places going, well, it's a little bit tough. We're okay. I'm like, are you? Are you really? It makes me think. Yeah, cold storage equals good sleep. I sold most of my neck, so at a loss. <laughs> Our people in Puerto Rico are nice. They're great. They're great. And most, even if you try to speak Spanish, they appreciate that. As bad as my Spanish is. They're great. And uh, awful drivers, though. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's funny in Puerto Rico, like stop signs and stop lights, it's like a suggestion, not like you have to do it. That's per that was a big, big wake up for me. I coach a stop sign. Maybe I'll take it. Uh... Let's see. Uh... <laughs> he spends all his things. Right? I think that's. Okay, last two questions. Is the food better in Puerto Rico, Texas? Texas by far, I'm sorry. It's all what you grew up with, right? If you like, I don't know, Mediterranean food. Of course, you know, Greece is probably the best Mediterranean food, right? If you like Mofongo, this is probably the best place of all time, right? But if you like brisket and meat and ton of just a ton of, of uh, meat products and stuff like that. Texas is the best place. Sorry, it's just the truth. The last question was, is there any update on Voyager? There is an update on Voyager. So Binance talked about uh, buying a Voyager, also another one called NINX, which looks like uh, to be a regulated uh, exchange. It's also coming out and they're putting in a bid. So I might be talking to those guys soon to see what they're doing and then go from there. But that's all we got. So look, then 52 minutes, it's uh, coming the time. I got a bunch of stuff to do today, like I'm sure you do. So that's it. So look, thanks so much for stopping by on a Sunday. Pretty cool. And if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, especially on these daily updates. But that's it. So thanks so much. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.